right, welcome everybody to our latest Live Motocross podcast as we talk all things SMX from Fort Worth from what was a wild weekend of action. Firstly, thank you everyone for listening and supporting the site. We really appreciate it. We'd also like to thank our partners in 24MX, Dirt Store, Fluke Still Clean and Dragon Energy for all their incredible support. As without them, none of this would be possible. All right, for this episode, I'm joined by Whiskey Throttle Editor-at-Large Jeff Beaver again, fresh from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, whatever you want to call it, mate. It was a wild weekend of action. You must have been hot as, the action was hot as. There's a lot going on there, mate, so how are you? I'm smart. Sp- Smoke, dude. Uh, it, was, it was only 95 or 98, 99. It was 100 on the thermometer at the track. But you're standing on all that concrete of the speedway. You got all the speedway, the track, the walls, everything. There was barely any breeze in there most of the day. And all the glass from that damn sweets area was like being you know, like taking a magnifying glass to an ant. So I got payback for all that shit I did as a kid. But um, uh, all the ants got me back on that one, got us all back. We were smoked, dude. Everybody was smoked. That that sucked. Um, the, the track, it, I, there's nothing. They they say there's better dirt around there, but it, it just it just turned it into concrete, dude. It was all blue groove everywhere. Everywhere was blue groove except for the sand sections. And uh, I really hope they take into consideration that next year to run it at night. Uh, Vegas will be at night this year. It's a proper night start, 7 p.m. West Coast time. Uh, the beautiful thing is about I'm on a 2,700 mile road trip that I started this morning from Southern California. I drove about oh, 700 miles to Northern Nevada to pick up my trailer, and I'm headed into Salt Lake City tonight, and uh, North Texas Panhandle tomorrow, and then Houston the day after that, and training, and then freaking fly back to. Uh, uh, Vegas on Friday morning at six o'clock in the morning, get land at seven fifteen, so I can go to the race for the weekend and fly back to Houston Sunday and work for a month. So that's my week. Uh, but the cool thing about that trip is I got to drive up I-15 and I passed, uh, the big pile of dirt within about a hundred yards that they're building the track with. And you could tell they had wetted it down overnight, but it did not look like topsoil from the local Vegas area. It looked pretty good. And there was a massive, and I mean, massive pile of sand like white beach sand so game on uh, i think that track at vegas is going to be pretty bitching dude oh mate it's going to be awesome you'll be looking forward to obviously the triple points finale it's going to be exciting mate and you'll be there it seems probably a long way away with all the traveling you got ahead of you mate but yeah i guess looking back at the race i guess the overriding theme from the riders was just obviously survival due to the track the heat it, it was pure know. it was pure survival it was pure yeah. survival bud sorry a lot of guys happy to just, get out there alive eh? yeah everybody was dude uh it was it was just flat out pure survival i mean even uh after uh the free practice day on friday even hayden wasn't throwing scrubs or whips or anything it was just straight up fundamentals motocross nobody was doing anything extra you know trying to scrub or whip or anything like that dude you you didn't dare try to whip your bike off one of those jumps you would have just been toast i mean chase said in the press conference he's all dude i went to the outside to where there was still soft dirt he goes i knew it was slow as hell but it was safer and uh, that's what i was doing so uh pretty much every rider just said that track was sick you know like being a smart ass right but uh um i mean hey we're still fresh and new into this. We can't beat Feld up or MX Sports over it too bad. You know, it was our first time there. Um, probably didn't expect it to be like that. Uh, you live, you learn. But those guys will take their notes and hopefully uh, make some good corrections for 2025. Because I guarantee you they're going to be back at Texas. Everybody says they're not. But there's a conversation, son. So we'll be back at Texas in 25. But if it's a day race... I won't be back in Texas 25. I'll be up in the press box being a media dork and Nate can go film. Oh yeah. I'm going to be a NASCAR spotter. I'm going to be like, Nate, 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 get over to the rhythm section. Nate, get over to the double. Nate, get over to the sand section. I ain't doing shit, but sitting in the air conditioning. That's what I'm doing. I got smart on Saturday. I learned. Yeah, you figure 25 years of working in the oil industry in Houston, I'd have got smart enough to know that was going to be some bullshit, but uh, whatever. 
Yeah, mate, sounds like you were pretty happy to uh, get out of there alive too, mate. And I guess, yeah, the Dirt Works guys did the best they could. You know, like you said, tough conditions, tough dirt to handle. You know, it was just a pretty rough weekend for everyone. And I guess, yeah, the guys were just saying how savage it was. A heap of injuries, sadly, and Mumford with that broken leg, especially. And, yeah, so many safety issues, questioning about the scheduling. You know, it was still a compelling watch, that's for sure, but it sort of left a lot of choice feedback behind, didn't it, mate? And I guess that's probably the toughest SMX yet. They'll have to sort of work out sort of how handling some PR and how that went down, mate. But just tell me how the hell did Tomac and Deegan get by with that scoop, mate? Must have been quite the uh, impressive achievement watching that in person. I don't know. I mean, the morning the track was okay. It was the first moto, the track was borderline barely rideable with the scoop. How the hell Tomac rode in the second moto with it, but the track slowed him down definitely, and I think he gassed himself pretty decent on the first moto dude when he was i didn't post everything i have on video of him behind the thing and dude he was he looked like a a red light and a stop sign when he took his uh jersey off and he was hot he was he you could have cooked an egg on his head um so you know just but you you know when you looked at jet and hunter and chase they were barely sweating that was one thing i did have a takeaway from because it wasn't as humid as or as hot as they're used to in Florida. So that was one takeaway that I found was very interesting. You know, and uh, when I talked to David about it, he goes, Hey, Tomac trains at the altitude, you know, he's got the, he's got the stamina, but he's not used to that heat like jet and Hunter and all those guys are, you know, and uh, Julian Bowmer is calling everybody a pussy. Cause he lives in Lake Havasu and it's 125 degrees Fahrenheit there. And he rides in that. So he's like, Oh man, it's cold. Give me my jacket, you know, pussies. You know, so, uh, but he, even he only got a, a fifth out there and you figured he would excel in that, that blue groove hard pack, but Havasu is a lot more sandy and loose than, than it is hard pack blue groove. I, I thought that uh, like De Francesco and those guys would, would kick ass in those conditions, but you know, the heat probably was just brutal for him, you know, and Hayden was smart in the, on Friday practice, he went and learned the track, got comfortable and pulled off, dude, he saved himself. I thought something happened. I asked his filmer, Donnie, I'm like, hey, where's Hayden? He goes, I don't know what happened. I heard through the grapevine. <laughs> get out there, get comfortable with it, learn the track, pull off, get out of get out of that heat. So kid smart. Yeah, it's great insight, mate. Obviously, that kind of stuff you only get from being there. And obviously, you were right there with the riders pulling off. You are seeing the suffering that they went through. And obviously, Hagrid was a for Hunter, mate. Obviously, being the Aussie and just being there, he's obviously technically so good and getting that first 450 overall. He's had so many moto wins. But yeah, he looked excellent. He had the bike as good as he could, even though it's just so tough to get it dialed for that. But yeah, he was struggling the intense, aggressive race. That moto one was something special, wasn't it? But just the focus, the concentration. Because on that track, any mistake was amplified, wasn't it, mate? There wasn't too much room for error. And all those guys, those heavy hitters battling it out dealing with the pressure rising to the occasion making mistakes in that grueling sort of environment mate i think anton from swap said it best it was like a war zone wasn't it mate so pretty cool for hunter there and obviously on to vegas for him it's going to be a big showdown and then the nation so tell us a bit about hunter and jet too if you want it was pretty cool seeing those guys at it with tomac and sexton oh uh, that track was more bombed out and depleted than baghdad in 03 after the marine you know the marines got in there and whooped everybody's ass i mean it was tore up but uh uh anton yeah he was right it was a war zone dude uh even anton you know he's you know thin guy good shape he was he was dragging ass dude there were skid marks behind him and typically he's running around like a like a ritalin patient you know he, he going 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 he don't slow down even he was like damn it's hot you know so they just whooped everybody the the conditions just suck but uh like brian put on that post i put up a little while ago uh you know, hey, everybody, the racing conditions, you got to race to the conditions. And he's right, you know. And I replied, well, I'm just selfish and I want uh, gumbo conditions where uh, I'm getting uh, sick whips and uh, turn downs and turn ups and filming shit. You know, I don't I don't want to go there and watch them just do like fundamentals motocross and like watch people I like eat shit. That kind of sucked. But yeah, the promote like, I, again, the promoter couldn't have known that it was going to get that bad. And you got to run the race. Um, you know, they all had the decision to make like Chase did. You could have slowed down and went off to the side and taken the slower line. And Chase was very smart in that, you know. So, yeah, you live, you learn. And on to, on to Vegas, baby. One thing I got, I forgot. When Chase, when Hunter pulled off the track, you know, I could see his face. And he's just kind of like, do, 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 do. Pulls off. Goes to his truck driver. Hey, did I win? 
truck driver goes something along the lines of no. And he's like, huh? And he, and he goes, nah, I'm messing with you. You won. And he goes, oh, sweet. And he goes, hey, man, can I have a water? And the guy gives him water. And he goes, oh, thanks, mate. And just walks off like it's a Tuesday afternoon at the test track. And I'm like, I kind of cock in my head like, aren't you excited? You know, and then he qu didn't kind of quite know. So he didn't want to look like a jackass. That's why I asked him in the press conference, you know. And he's all, I just didn't want to look like a dumbass, you know. So it was funny. But uh, uh, on the last lap, he had that little excursion off the track, right? And so I'm pretty good buddies with his mechanic, Cameron. And I go, how the hell did he not know that he he had the overall? And he goes, dude, I had overall written on the board. He went off the track. And I went, oh, shit. And I wiped it off the board. I didn't want to jinx him. <laughs> so he's like, I didn't have anything on the board when he went by. Uh, I was laughing my ass off, but I was really stoked for Cameron because he's worked his ass off the last couple of years and to get a 450 win and to get the red plate in SMX. And I mean, Saturday night, you know, Hunter could be the champ, dude. It's very real. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Cause obviously last year he was in contention and then he had to pull out of the last round. So he missed out on that huge, huge paycheck. So it'd be cool to see him get it done this time. And obviously Chase, obviously a really good rebound, a response by him. You know, the critics were all over him last week, weren't they, mate? And he sort of came out and once he gets that start, he shows what he can do. He rides his own race and he's just comfortable and looking really good handling everything so well. And he's obviously had a pretty tough week, no doubt. He obviously said to, I think it was Lewis on Vital, he had a bit of a meltdown during the week and he's ready for next weekend now, isn't he, mate? Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine he's probably pretty pissed off. Speaking of meltdown, I don't I think uh Lewis and, and his buddy, they had a mental meltdown by deciding to move to Florida. They're British. <laughs> British people don't belong in fucking Florida. You belong in Seattle. Go down and send a filmer down there. Do your reporting from a place that's overcast 99% of the time. Again, you're British. I'm like, what is the matter with you? But apparently, they actually, they they look like they were doing pretty good. But, you know, Lewis, he don't move too quick. And his, cam his filmer was out on the track. So his filmer is the one who took the shit into that deal. Oh, mate, yeah, it would be good. All those guys would be probably having a pretty hot one in Vegas too, mate, but not as hot from what we're hearing, obviously, with the night race you were saying, mate. And I guess what are some of the other takeaways? Yeah. Oh, it's not as hot, but it, you won't have the humidity in Vegas. The dry heat's a hell of a lot easier to deal with. And by the time we get to the race, it, it'll be in the evening. Uh, we won't have that brutal sun beating down on us, so that'll be a lot nicer. Yeah, and just tell us a bit about how was obviously we do the 250s now because we're on a shortened schedule here, mate. But just Deegan, I guess JT on the broadcast summed it up well. He was kind of seeing the track differently, wasn't he, mate? Learning everything so quickly. A lot of hallmarks of a future star like he already is going to be. But yeah, once he gets those starts, it's all over. And like VR was saying, I got decent starts, but five and six is not going to cut it when you're trying to chase down Deegan, is it, mate? So yeah, another real masterclass by the youngster, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know what? I think the kid is, I, I don't know how to say it, uh not autistic but he's he's got that kind of weird uh brain that like i think he is hyper quick on focusing on things you know what i mean and uh like you'll watch him in situations at the podium and you can tell a lot about somebody by their eyes and that guy's eyes are going a million miles an hour when he's like thinking and computing you know and you can see him kind of pick up on stuff and he'll either get out of there or he'll He'll turn it on and, you know, say, well, RJ, you know, uh, I guess that didn't work out for him talking shit. You know, he looked, saw me, saw his filmer and, you know, the Academy Award winning uh, performance came out of shit talking 101, dude. And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> when, we were at, uh, when we were at Charlotte, I was like, dude, that was pretty funny, dude. You know, I, I mean, I love RJ. He's a great guy. Bruce probably killed me if I ever said anything bad. But uh, it just the, the kids, uh, I think, got really, really good intelligence out there uh he he's thinking all the time he i don't think his mind wanders when he ra he's racing i think it's going a million miles an hour doing calculus out there and everybody else is doing arithmetic you know so yeah, he's on another level at the moment, that's for sure. And these SMX, you know, you look back a year ago and, you know, it's almost not a completely different rider, but the amount of improvement he's made in such a short amount of time so good, mate. And obviously, tells a little bit about Vial and Shimoda's day as well. So impressive, obviously, Vial second overall. You know, if you can get those starts, he might be able to run with Hayden for a bit longer and in with a chance of winning at the final, mate, that's for sure. And, you know, he was just saying how hard and dry that track was. And Shimoda, how impressive was he, mate? Really good riding, technically excellent. Impressive the way he handles it. He's got that sort of smoothness and sort of proficient riding style, throttle control and just really good to watch him riding that cool gear as well, mate. He handled it really well. So a few thoughts on those two as well. Uh, Vial was hauling ass. I mean, I haven't even watched the race. I've been so busy. I haven't had a chance to even watch the race. 
So I just see Hayden go by and then uh, see everybody else trying to chase him down. And Vial looked pretty fast. He he was going pretty good and had some smooth lines. And Shimoda, yeah, he was he was getting it. Uh, he was getting it pretty good. Uh, gear looked good. Uh, yeah, it's impressive. It's like somebody needs to lie to him and tell him that Anaheim one got moved to like G- October first, and then just make him go do a race with nobody around and just make him do the whole day. Like he was at a race, run the race on the same exact schedule at the times, yell at him, throw rocks at him. So, you know, um, do whatever to simulate it as much as you can a race schedule. That way, by the time he comes to Anaheim, he's about mid race uh, form or mid season format. And maybe the guy will have a damn championship run, but somebody's got to do something. I don't know, man. It's uh, that's a that's a mystery. Change out his sushi or some shit. Yeah, he's so talented. Yeah. You just obviously just piece it all together is just obviously hard to do. Easier said than done, no doubt. That 250 class is oh, yeah, yeah. stacked. It's like 16 odd factory bikes, isn't there, mate? Yeah, I'm just sat there. I'm talking shit. I have no idea what it takes to do what they're doing. I'd put, I'd look that bike out 10 feet out of the gate. But uh, uh, it's impressive that he can come back from an injury that quick. And mm. like he said, he goes, well, you don't really forget how to ride. But still, he had surgery and got fixed and he's still running at that top level, dude. I'd still be sitting at home, like Winston getting out of the damn chair, you know? So yeah. kids a savage. Don't let him fool you. Cause he's all quiet. Oh yeah, man. He's a weapon on a dirt bike. That's for sure. And I guess a couple more before we let you go, mate, would you like to touch on Jordan Smith? Obviously good day. Juju. Excellent. Again, you know, he could have been even better without that little mistake. And tell us, is there a little bit of mode across the nation's chat? A bit worried AP struggling with the injury. Hymas is going to be sitting out just so he can get right. Is there a bit of chat going on there, mate? A bit of worry, concern. You know, there's a few guys that will be probably lining up. RJ would probably be the logical choice with the KTM Connect. I don't know about Juju. He might be doing the World Championships jet skis. He might not be available because those KTM group guys are the logical choices. But it's not looking too good, is it? I I, I don't think RJ is the logical choice because he's been off all summer. I think Juju. I think you'd have to say if Chance can't do it, then you you ask Juju, and I think Juju would go in a heartbeat. That kid's – you cut him open and he bleeds red, white, and blue, you know. So, um, you know, I'm kind of surprised that he was never talked about really, but then you look at his performance in SMX at the first round, I was like, okay, maybe we should have talked about him. And, and, and nothing to bash on Chance because the kid earned it and he wanted it, but he's just hurt. And so, uh, and, and, and let me backtrack. I didn't see Jordan out there for more than two seconds. I have no clue how he rode. Uh, Juju rode pretty decent, but I think he was smart and didn't want to kill himself. But yeah, to, to hop into the SMX, AP's got a wounded wing. Uh, you know, Chase is struggling with the bike and uh, Hymas has got a bum knee. Fuck yeah. Go America. <laughs> you know, I, was, I, I, after the, after the motos were over, I was sitting with Jason McAlpine, or however you say his last name, and I just looked at him and I go, Australia's looking pretty good for the nations, Bubba. <laughs> he goes, he goes, fuck yeah, team Australia play, or how, you know, Jace, you know, and I'm like, fuck. We're never going to hear the end of it if you guys fucking win. No, I'm going to have to listen to it all fucking year, every week on a Gypsy Tales clip, fucking, uh, uh, team of Australia, I'm like, oh, motherfucker. I have to mute Jace for a year and see him at the fuck at the races and just be like, leave me alone, get away from me. <laughs> Nothing I can do to him. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt. He'll wrap me up like a pretzel and whoop my ass, so I can't even talk shit. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to eat crow, dude. That's gonna <laughs> suck. If 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 you guys win, it's America. You never know. We might pull it off. Yeah, that's absolutely stacked this year. The nations, mate. We can sort of chat about that later. But obviously, before I let you go, mate, any final thoughts? Obviously, shout out to Ping, who's been fighting those fires too, and the crew there, mate. So a lot been happening for him, mate. He's been flat out, and I guess any fallout from last week. You know, we talked about the schedule too much racing. Was there much said about that in the pits too, mate? Not a damn thing was said in that press conference. I think there was plenty of conversations between the powers that be and the teams that said, you just shut your damn mouth. You're here to talk about the race that just happened. And that went over like a fart in church, man. So, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, no, I didn't hear a peep about that. And uh, I sure as hell wasn't going to bring it up. You know, uh, it's going to be awesome to see what happens. And then hopefully, wh- how many weeks do we have between uh, this next weekend and the Nations? One week? So there's one weekend free, which is when the MXGP final round is in Spain, and then it's the Nations. So it's two weeks? Yeah. Oh, man. And in America, we got to try the, – the Americans are smart. They'll just travel over immediately after the race. I would – I'd take a day off and then go I'd, – I'd take the whole team and go right after that and let them all recuperate from – 
Vegas SMX and and uh, let them acclimate to Europe, food, culture, conditions, all that. that that's what I would do. But, uh, man, that's a short window. Yeah, and uh, as far as Dave goes, um, he's off the fire line. Uh, uh, the, it's uh, getting down into the 30s at night. A cold front came through, a heavy fog and clouds up there. So if there is any fire activity left, it's – you know, you could go out there with a squirt gun and put it out at this point. So uh, they got their ass kicked for about 10 days and then it went away. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, dude's a savage, man. Little, little fucker's a hog, man. He gets out there and fights some fires and runs burning buildings. And I'm like, man, bullshit. <laughs> I'm going the other way and calling you. <laughs> Have fun. Don't get hurt, boss. Yeah, mate. Yeah, well said. He's a savage. Yeah, mate, he's a legend, isn't he? So, you know, thanks again for joining us, mate. Any final thoughts before we let you go? I'll thank the sponsors in 24MX, Dirt Store, Fuchs, Silk Clean, and Dragon Energy for all their incredible support. Obviously, a shortened edition this one. We're on a tight time frame, mate. But any final thoughts, and you can round this one out. Yeah, I just, uh, it's uh, it's winner take all. I mean, I, I did tell Sean from Feld, I go, how the hell did you guys get so lucky to have it, it land like this two years in a row? And maybe they had some analysts look at, by doing the double and triple points that, it, the odds are that, uh, you know, it's going to be really tight like Vegas 06, you know, uh, two years in a row. I mean, we got it coming down to one point separating first and second. What is it? Six to the third place. Uh, I mean, it's Vegas 06 and and uh, it's winner take all. You know, somebody's going to have their heart broken. The only difference is, is there's no world championship to go along with it. You know, Bubba got that uh, that, uh, you know. Uh, booby prize of a world title and uh that the fim gave him and uh yeah you bring up the fim over here in america you might get punched in the eye so just be, be knowing that if you come over here oh the fim wow what the fuck yeah we love the fim over here and uh but uh uh of course the ama catches a bunch of crap they just picked up all the slack when uh, the fim left but um yeah I, I i told him i go dude how the hell did you end up with this scenario twice and he goes, I don't know, but it's awesome. <laughs> you know, so that, that, that about sums it up. This is awesome, dude. We go into the last round with the three biggest names about to gun it out. And all Deegan has to do is not throw it away. That's about my final thoughts. Yeah. All the best, mate. Take it easy, drive safe and we'll speak soon, mate. All right, brother. Thanks a lot for having me on again. No worries, mate. Have a good one.